All righty. We have been dealing with the I am's of Jesus since I believe August of last year. So for quite a while, there's been a dealing going on of Jesus saying, I am. And I mentioned this last week, it came out of the study, or I believe I mentioned it. It came out of the study of the church, which is his body, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am. And it just hit me that Jesus declared who he is. He said, I am the bread, I am the light, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. So, so we see all this declaration that he begins to declare of himself in the scripture. And that's what we've been looking at is the I am's of Jesus and its relationship to the church, which is his body, who are the believers in Christ. Well, we've been on, or we began, I am the life. So last week we began, I am the life. In John 14, Jesus declared of himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So he's the way, he's the truth, and he is the life. He declared of himself to Martha when Lazarus died, I am the resurrection and the life. So he not only declared that he is the resurrection, he said, I'm the life. In other words, I'm the life you're raised up into. And we're going to look at that some today. We're going to look at that very thing that we're raised up from the dead into the life. So in John 10, verse 10, Jesus said, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, when you consider this, have you ever thought what the people who were there may have thought when Jesus said, he's the life, or I've come that you might have life and have it abundantly. They could have thought, well, I'm breathing oxygen. They could have thought I'm alive. They could have thought I'm doing really well, you know, because typically people look at abundant life as something pertaining to the natural. Like some people think, that what he meant was I don't have very much in the natural, so he come to give me more natural things. Some may believe he said, someday you will have eternal life. That's So there's different views when you come to this scripture and you come to what Jesus said, I am come that they might have life. So his purpose of coming was life. But we have to understand what the life is. And we looked at this last week, that you must lose your soul to find life. And we looked at that, lose your life in order to gain his life. And, and that word we, we looked at last week in John's gospel for the losing of the life is actually the soul. The soul, he that loveth his life shall lose it. So that's actually the word soul, suke. And the eternal life, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. To eternal life is zoe, is a Greek word zoe. And it's dealing with another quality of life. It's the life of Christ. And that's what Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have abundance of this life, this life in abundance. I am the way, the truth, and the life, the abundance of him. Well, how do I get that abundance? How do I get the abundance of Christ dwelling in me? How does that happen? We should have these questions in our hearts 
and we should allow the Lord to answer them. In John 6, verse 40, John 6, verse 40, it says, For this is the will of my Father, that everyone that beholdeth the Son and believeth on him should have eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Now, everyone that beholdeth the Son and believeth on him should have eternal life. Now, that's a mouthful. That's a mouthful. Does that mean I would have to be alive in Jesus' day? and have beheld him in the flesh? Or does that mean someday far away? I have to see Jesus coming again in the flesh to behold the Son and have life. And I don't believe either answer would be correct. I don't believe either one of those thoughts would be correct. Every, everyone that beholdeth the Son and believeth on him should have eternal life. How we behold the Son today is by the Spirit of God. And he raises us up in the last day. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. But how do we get the Zoe life or the eternal life, the quality of life that is Christ? How do we get that? We believe and behold him. That's what Jesus says. And he says, this is the will of my father that we would behold the Son, that everyone that beholdeth the Son and believe should have life. And I will raise him. See, this life, I believe, raises us out of death. And we've defined for months death, that in Adam all die. The carnal mind is death. So we've defined what death is, that death is the realm of man, that in Adam all are dead, and so as we behold the Son and believe on what we're seeing by the Spirit of God, this life is administered to our hearts or manifest or revealed. Actually, I believe it's already been administered to our hearts if we've received Him. But it keeps being manifest to us as we see Him by the Spirit of God we behold him by the Spirit of God, and we're raised up in his life. See, Jesus raises us up to his life. He said in John's gospel to some of the Jews, he told them, you are from below or beneath, according to the translation. I am from above. So, so there's two distinction. There's, there's two distinct places that man originates from, and one is below. One is below the earth. The earth. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. That's above. Even in the natural, that's true. You have the earth, and in the natural, the heavens above it. <laughs> so here in the spiritual, you have the earth and the heaven is above it. And he, Christ, is from above. He come out of God. He says, you're of this world. I am not of this world. That is why I told you that you would die in your sins. For unless you believe, here's this word believe again. Unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. That's what again, what he said, John 6, he that believeth should have eternal life. So, so how to get out of death is to believe in Jesus Christ, in the simplistic truth of the gospel. We believe in Jesus Christ. We receive him. And he translates us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. So we move by the spirit from earthiness to heavenliness. 
And this is all in beholding the Son. John chapter 6, verse 50 says, This is the bread which cometh down out of heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. Wow, what a bread. You can eat of this bread and not die. I am the living bread which came down out of heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Yea, and the bread which I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove one with another, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus therefore said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have not life in yourselves. So unless I eat his flesh and drink his blood, partake of him, I don't have life. And again, I'm going to say I do that by the Spirit of God. Because the Spirit of God comes, according to Jesus in John chapter 16, and he convicts the world of sin. And so he shows us to be in need of Christ. And so we receive Christ, and then there's this continual unfolding of the Lord that should be going on in our hearts. It shouldn't be this one-time event that I've received Christ, but there's an unfolding, and that's what Jesus says in John 16. He shall take of me, of mine, and show it to you, or disclose it, or reveal it. So the Spirit comes and reveals Jesus Christ, in death, burial, and resurrection. And that's what we eat of. That's what we eat of. That's the bread of life. We eat of him. We are, we're partaking of him. And as we partake of him, and that of him becomes real in us, that of him, that's life. That of him, that becomes real in us, whether it's being dead to sin, if that becomes real in us, then the life of Christ in that measure is real in me. If it becomes real in us that we're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, then the life of Christ has become real in me in that measure, the measure of him. See, we eat his flesh and drink his blood that what he is would be real in me. Because he's dead to sin. He's the one dead to the world. He's the one that the world can't touch. So how that becomes real in me is eating of him as the spirit of God makes it real in me. And like I said, the first place the spirit of God deals with me is I need a savior. I'm lost. I don't have life. And so I receive Christ. Well, he defined himself as life. So I received in me eternal life. So Christ is my life. And Paul said that when Christ appears, we appear with him in glory. I, I, and I don't think this is a one-time event. This is the continual revealing and manifesting of Christ in our heart that we be filled up with him in the measures of him. Like I'm saying, dead to sin, dead to the world, alive unto God, righteous, holy, prince of peace, king of kings. These are his measurements. These aren't just words written on the page about him, but these are attributes of Christ characteristics of Christ that are to be measured out in our hearts. And when those attributes of him become alive in us, that's life. So, so if we come to a place where peace like a river is flowing in our soul, that's life. That's Christ's life. That's a new state of being. Because in the old man, we didn't have peace like a river in our soul. We had anxiety, we had troubles, we had all the, all the 
the things of the carnal man in her soul. So, so now God by his spirit is showing us Christ and, it, and it's becoming alive in us. Alive in us. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So we eat his flesh and we drink his blood and he raises us up in the last day. Let me read the rest of this and we're going to get to that being raised up in the last day. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood have eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day. That's verse 56. Or actually, excuse me, verse 54, then verse 55, for my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood abides in me and I in him. And this is the reality we want to come to as Christians, to abide in him and he to abide in us. As the living Father have sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he that eateth me, he also shall live because of me. That's how we live, is because of him. He said in John 14, he said, Yellow, while the world see me no more, but you see me, because I live, ye shall live also. So, so I live because he lives in me. If we could ever just get a hold of that. The world see me no more, but you see me because I live. Ye live also. How I live is he that is life is in me. And now I'm comprehending this life. This life that is full of peace full of righteousness, full of faith. I'm comprehending his life. At that day, see, here's a day again. You shall know that I am in my Father, ye and me and I and you. That day, when the spirit of truth comes, could that be the same thing as the last day? I believe it is. I believe it is. See, we have a picture in our mind of days and times and years according to the natural, according to the natural man. But when the spirit comes and shows us Christ, he shows us light of the day by showing us Christ. That's light of the day. That's light of the day. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He will raise us up at the last day the last day. And this last day, I believe, is this day of Christ that the Spirit of God reveals to us. Now, I just showed you one example in John 14 at that day. Well, that day's been going on since the Spirit of God came. People have been realizing ever since the Spirit of God came that they were in him, in Christ, and Christ was in them. They've been realizing it since that day. Now, I, I wrote myself a note, and I've kind of already talked about it. I said, in order to have the day, you must have light, correct? The light of his appearing is the eternal day. The light of his appearing is the eternal day. Again, today is the day of salvation. Well, that didn't end on a Monday or a Sunday. That day came with the Spirit of the Lord. That's when the day of salvation came with the Spirit of the Lord. Today's the day of salvation that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that eternal day came when the Spirit of God came on the day of Pentecost. And we have this glorious eternal day in Christ. Same thing. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Psalms 118.24. And I 
And I'm sure there's a natural event connected to Psalms 118.24, but the spiritual reality of the day the Lord made is this day that's in Christ, is this glorious day that we're the creation of, a new creation created of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And we rejoice in this day, in this seeing that we're a new creature, that all the condemnation that was against me has passed away through the death of Christ, and that I'm raised up in his life. I have eternal life. Even when my physical body goes to the grave, I have life in Christ. That ain't going to end. He is my life. And that's what I'm comprehending by the Spirit of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4 says, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given you in Christ Jesus, that in everything you were enriched in him, in all speech and in all knowledge, even as the testimony concerning Christ was confirmed in you, so that you are not lacking in any gift, awaiting eagerly the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, what Paul's saying to the Corinthians that they are waiting for is the revel revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul says in the book of Galatians, chapter 1, that Jesus Christ was revealed in him. So I believe Paul's telling the Corinthians that they're waiting. They should be looking and waiting for Christ to be revealed. And in this revealing, he will, who will also confirm you to the end. This word confirm means secure, establish you to the end. Now, that word end means consummation, the end goal purpose such as the closure of, with all its results, reaching the end. All right, so let's read this close. So that you are not lacking in any gift, awaiting eagerly the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end blameless in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when the light of Christ comes in our hearts, or we see by that light, we find ourselves blameless through that light. I can't find myself blameless any other way, but through the seeing of him. In this glorious day, I can find myself blameless. I can find his body blameless through the light of the knowledge of him in this day, this eternal day of the spirit of God. Can't find it in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but I find it in the light of his appearing because I begin to see what he has done. I begin to see the work he did and that he brought us forth in that work. He brought us forth in himself. Now, to me, this is the day. This of Christ that I see, I believe, is the day, the eternal day, the day of the Lord Jesus Christ, because we're seeing of him. We're not seeing of Adam. See, see, when I saw of Adam, I saw I was condemned. I saw I was lost. I saw I was destitute. All that was in my heart. But now I'm seeing by Christ, so I'm seeing another day. And in this day, I'm in life. This day, I'm not destitute. This day, I'm not, you know, a sinner. This day, I'm a new creature created of God in Christ Jesus. 
It says, God is faithful through whom we were called, or you were called, into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we could stay there probably forever because that's where we're at in the fellowship of Jesus Christ. And the spirit of God is revealing him that we have this fellowship, that we have this union. And this same fellowship and union we, we have with Christ, we have one with another. That's how we can even love one another. That's how we can even desire good for one another because we desire this same fellowship of God in Christ with all those in Christ. In fact, I believe most of us that come to this, if not all, desire for the whole earth that all would come to see, that all would know him. I'm not saying all do know him because we must be born of the Spirit of God. We must eat his flesh and drink his blood. But I'm saying the desire is that all would come into this great fellowship of God. That's in Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5 says, verse 14. For the love of Christ constrains us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead and that he died for all that they which live, which live, should not henceforth live unto themselves. See, this goes back to John chapter 12. Hallelujah. He that loveth his life, self-life, shall lose it. He that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. So, so he died that we wouldn't live unto ourselves, unto self-life, but we would live unto him who, which died for them and rose again. Not just which died, but rose out from the dead. So our living is unto him, is in comprehension of him. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now, henceforth, know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God. Hallelujah. Who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation, if any man be in Christ. If any man in Christ. In Christ. See, that's the definition of our life, is in Christ. What is in Christ? What is in Christ? What is in Christ has to be revealed in my heart by the Spirit of God. And we have to apprehend it by faith. Honey, I, I believe this is the walk of faith. I believe it's the greatest walk of faith. I'm not saying we don't have faith for natural things. I, I believe in having faith for natural things. But I believe the greatest walk of faith is comprehending Christ. As the Spirit shows him to us, we comprehend it, we receive it, we believe it, and we walk in it. I believe that's the greatest walk of faith. And we walk as a new creature. We begin to walk with one another as a new creature. As in life. Because the new creature is in life. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. One last place, it keeps coming to my heart. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I dealt with some of this, I believe, last week. But 1 Corinthians chapter 2 says in verse 6, Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of the world knew uh, of this world knew, for 
Had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. Now, I believe them could be him. Actually, the them is in parentheses. God hath revealed unto us by his spirit. He shall take of me, Jesus said, and show me to you. So what God reveals is Christ. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Now what did Jesus say? All things of the Father are mine. So what's the Spirit searching? The things of Christ. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in him, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is, of, which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual I really believe this could be written compare, comparing spiritual things with the spiritual one because the spiritual one defines spiritual things. I, I can talk about righteousness or peace, but until the spiritual one is revealed and righteousness and peace is spiritual because the natural man didn't have righteousness and peace. But the spiritual man does. I can talk about it, but they have to be defined or taught by the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost isn't just teaching me the Bible. He is, because he's the Bible's God's words. This book we call the Bible, written of men, was written as God breathed up on them, influenced them, gave them the word. Now, I believe that with all my heart. But the spiritual one is the living word revealed in our hearts. And that living word is life. And that living word is Christ. So I believe God shows the spiritual things of the Bible in the spiritual one who is Christ. And that's our life. That's our life. And that's what we're comprehending. We are comprehending our life as he appears. When Christ who is our life shall appear or be manifested, we appear with him in glory. Like I said earlier, I believe this is a continual process. He's revealing himself in us. He is the life. Well, glory be to God. I pray this has ministered to your heart, and we will continue this study, Lord willing, next week. May God richly bless you in the life of Christ. Amen.